Hey there. So today we're doing something a little different. Stepping back in history to the middle of the 19th century. Uh, to a time uh, when this country was a lot more divided than it is today. And I know a lot of people think that's impossible. But, you know, we actually had a civil war. And this is a reproduction of a gun that was used in the Civil War. Uh, this is in a, a reproduction of the Remington New Model Army. It's made by Uberti in Italy. Um, and it's a fantastic reproduction of one of the most modern um, black powder revolvers of the middle-late 19th century. So a lot of people know this as the 1858 Remington. And it's been called that because on the gun, it had a uh, patent date of 1858. Uh, in reality, they really didn't see widespread adoption and production until about 1863. So height of the Civil War, um, the U.S. military had been issuing Colt 1851 navies and 1860 armies. The Navy was a 36 caliber revolver. The Army was 44. And they were very happy with them. Uh, but Colt's uh, plant burned down in, I want to say, 1862 or 1863. And they were unable to fulfill the requirements of their, uh, uh, of the U.S. military to provide those revolvers. So Remington stepped in and had this gun. And in a lot of ways, it's a better gun than the Colt, and I know that's going to upset a lot of people. But I've had an 1860 Army, and I've shot this gun, the uh, new model Army, and i got to tell you, if, <laughs> if I somehow got transported back to my great-great-grandfather's uh, shoes as a Confederate cavalryman, I would have done everything I could to get a Yankee Remington. Um, now, this was the third most popular revolver in Union forces behind the Colts, the 60 Army, and the 51 Navy. Uh, the Confederacy would use anything they could get their hands on. And uh, the official sidearm was supposed to be the Colt 1851, but in reality, uh, the number one supplier for firearms for the Confederacy was the U.S. government. Uh, you had outfits like Mosby's Rangers in the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia that would raid federal supply trains. and Every one of those cavalrymen carried four Colt 1860 armies. So the one the number of things that I really like about the Remington is you have a modern design with a modern closed top strap. Makes the revolver much stronger than a Colt. Um, it also does not suffer the reliability issues that some of the Colts would, where caps would, after firing, uh, they explode the percussion cap, which looks like that. That turned into the modern day primer, and that would go onto what people will call the cone or nipple, and that's what sets the loose powder charge off. And on a Colt, it's very common for them to get blown out into the action and literally tie up or jam, and I don't like using that word, but it would literally jam up the revolver. Um, you don't see that on the Remingtons. Um, now, some people have experienced uh, uh, fouling, increased fouling, because you do have some tighter tolerances with the Remington. Um, I haven't found that to be a case yet. So, uh, so I'm going to be loading uh, using loose powder. Uh, I've got a 30 grain spout on this uh, powder horn and or flask and that was the, about the average load for the 1860 Army or the 18 or the uh, Remington New Model Army. And I'm going to be loading that directly into the chamber. Then use a felt wad that's been treated over top of the powder and then a 140 grain 454 round ball. So in the 19th century, they really wouldn't be using these. They would just load the powder, put the ball on, 
ram it down and go forth and, and do what they needed to do. Uh, in modern times, this felt wad helps keep the barrel clean and helps keep uh, uh, the powder fouling down in the barrel. So we're using that. Also, during the Civil War, by the time of the Civil War, and starting, I think, in, in the Mexican-American War in 1847, uh, people had paper cartridges where you would take uh, a nitrated pa uh, paper, almost like cigarette paper, and have your powder charge pre-measured and a ball or a conical bullet glued into it, and they would carry them in their pouch, and they could just thumb those paper cartridges into the front of the chamber, ram the bullet down like you would normally, and then you would still have to manually cap, but that cut down on a lot of time. Reality is, in the height of battle, you're not going to stop and reload one of these revolvers, um, which is why you see photographs, uh, especially of cavalrymen, carrying multiple revolvers. There just wasn't the time. There's no way you're going to do that on a bouncing horse. Um, so, to load this, you take your powder flask, 30 grains of uh, triple FG, put your finger over top, pull that down, that releases 30 grains, and then you're going to pour that into the open mouth of the chamber. Take your felt wad, put that over top, take your round ball, get that started, and rotate that underneath the rammer, and then you're going to pull the rammer down, and it will force that ball back into the chamber, which is the ball is oversized for the chamber and it will cut a small ring of lead. That's going to tell you you've got the right size ball and you shouldn't have a situation called a, a chain fire where flame from one chamber passes through the mouth of the next detonating the whole cylinder. So, because that's bad. So we're going to do that five more times. You can see how unrealistic this would be to try to do this while people are shooting at you or charging you or bouncing around on a horse or a wagon. The uh, New York Reload, where you just pull a different another gun, uh, probably did not start in New York. Well, it might have. Obviously, I'm wearing eye protection. Um, you should be doing that anyway if you're firing a gun, but especially with black powder, where you have all kinds of stuff going on. And even though this is made out of modern steel, you're still dealing with black powder, which is in, categorized as an explosive and not really repellent. One more, and then we cap. I have to tell you, doing all this, it really does drive home how hard these men were who actually fought with these guns. Because once you shot five or six rounds, that was it. You drew your knife and you got to work. So, percussion cap goes on to, people will call them a cone or a nipple, and 
drop them on. At this point, you want to keep your fingers away from the opening of the chamber just in case something does happen. Uh, everything gets blown out the front without your hand in front of it. So after I put my six caps on here, I'm going to take a piece of dowel and just push the cap forward to make sure that they're fully seated. All right, at this point I'm gonna pull the trigger hammer slightly back, pull the trigger, let it ride down. And the hammer is now actually sitting between two loaded chambers, so it's perfectly safe. And, and this is how you would carry one of these guns uh, back in the you know 1860s, 1870s. Um, as hard as they are to load, you need every shot, all six. So, all right. I gotta tell you, um, there are a lot of ways to have fun, but this is a pretty seriously good way to have fun. Um, especially if you are into history, especially if you are into um, black powder, or just military firearms in general. It does really give you an appreciation. So, well thanks for watching.